Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Hawaiian Affairs Committee hearing. Um, I'm the chair, Senator Miley Shimabukuro, and we also have members, Senators Favela, Vice Chair, and then Senators Ihara, Kyoho Kalole, and Richards. This hearing is being streamed live on YouTube. You can find links to viewing options for all Senate hearings and meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website. If you're interested in seeing um, written testimony, go to capital.hawaii.gov. In the unlikely event, we must abruptly end this hearing due to major technical difficulties. The committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business and a public notice will be posted on the website. And for those testifying remotely, all your audio will be muted and video disabled until it's your turn to testify. As our practice is, it's a two minute time limit per testifier. And if there are temporary technical glitches in your, during your turn, we may have to move on to the next person. And we appreciate your understanding and remind you that we have um, received your written testimony. And members, please wait to ask questions until um, we've gone through all the testifiers. And so um, we're gonna take some things out of order. Um, we have a lot of testimony for our GM. So we're gonna go with the um, resolutions first. Um, we're going to start with HCR 125, requesting DHHL to identify resources needed to execute a plan to repair homes for safe habitation. And so first up for this, we have DHHL with comments. Hello. Aloha, Chair Shimabukuro, Senator Richards, and members of the committee who I hope will join us later. The department stands on its written testimony with comments, and I'm available for questions. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Dina Kiave, support. Marion Kapuniai, support. And Kelly Ann Dehilig, support. Anyone else here for HCR 125? Okay. See, no members, any questions? Okay. Next, SR 196. This is urging the establishment of a Native Hawaiian intellectual property working group to discuss policies and legislation with respect to Native Hawaiian intellectual property. And so, first up, we have DBED in support. Um, Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs in support. Oh, are you? Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Lemomi Khan with comments. She's on Zoom. And Oha support. Oh, yes. Aloha. Aloha, Chair. Mahalo Nui Loa for the opportunity to testify in support of this resolution. Um, I just wanted to be sure that my my recommended amendments were not ignored, and that is to include the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs among the membership of the uh, the intellectual property working group, and to also include them in the distribution clause. Um, this respects the ninth whereas clause of the resolution itself which points out that the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs has passed several resolutions on this very issue and has asked for legislative support in the past. So thank you very much. Thank you, Lemomi. Aloha. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, Oha in support. Marin Kapuniai, support. Julia Estegoy Kaho'one in support. Anyone else here for SR 196? Okay. Good. Angela, you're for SR 196? Okay. Yep, come forward. Yes. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, and the Hawaiian Affairs Committee. Angela Melody Young testifying um, in strong support. So aloha means hello and goodbye, and it signifies love, compassion, and kindness. Since last year, the or since 2018, the Hawaiian word has also been legally connected to poke, a bowl of diced raw fish. And um, in 2018, a non-Hawaiian food chain that originated in Chicago, the food chain Aloha Poke Company, trademarked Aloha Poke and sent cease and desist letters to restaurants in Hawaii and Alaska um, to stop them from um, trademarking aloha in their businesses. The Hawaii legislature responded by passing a resolution that creates a task force to develop legal protections for Native Hawaiian cultural intellectual property, traditional cultural expressions, and genetic resources. Um, so 
The enacted resolution emphasizes that Native Hawaiians' collective intellectual property rights are based on traditional and cultural knowledge developed over thousands of years and passed down through generations. It also contends that Western intellectual property law that recognize patents, trademarks, designs, and copyright often facilitate the theft, misuse, and misappropriation of indigenous knowledge by researchers, authors, scientists, biotechnology corporations, universities, the fashion industry, and others. Um, and from the one of the Alaska business owners who received a cease and desist letter um, told the media um, this. I know some people are like, aloha is just a generic word. Everyone says it, but not to our people. It's not. Aloha encompasses everything. We live aloha. We give it. We share it. It's not to be restricted. And I think that's why it's so triggering to people and it's so offensive and it's so hurtful. So, um, you know, I, as someone who grew up in Kalihi and in Hawaii, um, really value aloha and Native Hawaiian intellectual property. So hence I support the business, um, the businesses and their rights and also the Native Hawaiians and their rights to intellectual property. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you so much. Anyone else here for SR 196? Seeing none members, any questions? Okay, and then last resolution is HCR 153. This is requesting DHHL to conduct a study that evaluates possible methods of flood remediation and flood aversion for certain areas of the island of Molokai. And first up, we have DHHL with comments. Thank you. Thank you. Now, anyone else here for HCR 153? Seeing none, members, any questions? Okay. Okay. To vote. So then we're going to go on then to our last um, measure on this agenda, which is GM 674, submitting for consideration and confirmation to the Hawaiian Homes Commission, gubernatorial nominee, Makai Freitas, for a term to expire June 30, 2025. And first up, we have um, Governor. Dr. Josh Green in support. We have DHHL in support. Aloha ho, Oriana Leao Koi, you know, DHHL is now has the Government Relations Program Specialist. The department stands on its recent testimony in strong support of Mr. Freitas and Chairman Watson and Deputy Ducat could not be present today because we have a commission meeting in motion right now on the island of Molokai, but um, they also wanted to express their strong support of Commissioner Freitas, and we're happy and excited to have him on board. Mahalo. Oh, thank you. Um, so Senator Malama Solomon, um, DPH HCC District 8 Council in support. We have, um, let's see. UPW in support. Hello. Hello, Chair Shimon oh. Bukuro, Senator uh, Richards, Kamakana Kamalo, Government Affairs Manager, uh, United Public Workers, AFSHMI Local 646, AFL CIO. Uh, you have a written testimony in support. Uh, we'll stand on that written testimony and we, we humbly ask that you, um, that this committee, um, support Mr. Freitas' confirmation. Thank Mahalo. you for the opportunity. Mahalo. Um, next, we have Pauline Namuo, um, Oahu Commissioners from the Hawaiian Homes Commission, support. We have Waimea Hawaiian Homestead Association in support. Patty Kahanamoku Teruya, um, Hawaiian Homes Commissioner for Oahu in support. Lani Hao Properties LLC, these are all in support. ILWU um, 142 Longshore Division, ILW Local 100, um, these are a bunch of uh, Odene Keave opposition. But then these are all in support. Kahana Albino, Kama Hopkins, Marin Kapuniai, Edith Kavai, Charmaine Kamaka, James Hustis, Craig Bo Kahui, Nancy Taylor, Michael Kalekini, Donna Dean Sterling, Kurt Kalama, Kaipo B, Patty Cook, Lyle Nicely, Palanico Vitale, Jay White. Sean Stoltzman, David Maeva, Thomas Cathcartill, Colin Mansanas, uh, Keone B, Sam, Edward Klanensky, Klanensky, Noah, Alana Kaili, Sean Morimoto, 
Walter Walker, Adrian Nakashima, Chauncey Dunhauer, James Mueller, Kelsey Beck, Kaena Pakai, Paikai, Paquito um, Kapalan, Noah Campbell, Joan Murray Thornton, Jonathan Tuine, Jacob Ramos, Zorich Palimo'o, Robert Enriquez, Conan Donahue, um, Kaika Sasaoka, Anthony Casabir, Dustin Vieira, Chad Amasiu, Chaz Bajet, Pito Hiko, Sierra Rivilla, Dana Kaluhiva, Jeremy Inferrera, Clinton Blackman, Brandon Parker, Thomas Eli Timoteo, Jordan Kapu, B. Hansen, William Campbell, Kekoa Brun, Anthony Padilla, Montgomery Meyer, Kaleo Buck, Blair Nahele, Kaai Brun, Christopher Finau, Kenneth Robert Decker. Again, these are all in support. Manny Kulu, Kulu Kulu Lani, um, Kainalu Paikai, Dave Terrier, Kekoa Masutani, Tyler Yu, Lawrence DeCosta III, Robert Lique, Keone Mendiola, Clayton Glass, John Rabanal, Michael Misunas, Ikaika Kernan, Trey, Alfred Horner, Stephen Paling IV, may the, may the, may the fourth, yeah. Ashkin um, Kuhalua, Aaron Miyashiro, Christian Monso, Troy Keithley, Albert Ainu'u, Mike Sullivan, Nathan Dudua, Sai Delizo, Lon Peresa, Blaine Dequito, Kanoa Leahy, Ted Scott, Hubert Pruitt, Levi Archuleta, all in support, Gabriel, Wayne Wills, Keenan Luke, Brandon Ching, Patrick Estes, Lafaele Coca, Michael Brum, Kalua B, Albert B, Brian Talatala, Ian Black, Arthur Mahoy, Joseph Tanimoto, Sheila Apisa, Ty Apisa Jr., Scott Hendricks, Christian Fern, Kawilani Almeida, Patrick Kahavaiola'a, Dennis Nevis, Randy Awo, Kalei Ornelis, Kimberly Honda, and Nalani. Anyone else here for GM 674? Wow, that was like a graduation list. <laughs> okay, yes, we have someone on Zoom. Aloha, Chair. Shimabu, Aloha. Members of the committee. Uh, this is Sue Lilo, a council member for District 3. I stand in strong support of Makai Freitas to the Department of Hawaiian Homelands Commission. Uh, I have the privilege and honor of representing two homestead communities, Kilkaha and Kanaeva, and also reside on homestead lands. Mr. Freitas uh, is an excellent candidate. He took the time about a month ago to reach out to our beneficiaries, 13 homestead communities, the most uh, homestead communities in the state. As you know, uh, we have about 120,000 acres and Hawaiian Homes manages about 2,500 leases on Hawaiian homelands here on the Big Island. Mr. Freitas is an excellent candidate and his ability to reach and touch our beneficiaries is about beyond reproach. He really will serve our trust lands and our beneficiaries to the best of their his ability. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Leloy. Um, anyone else here to testify uh, for GM 674? There's some in the audience. Feel free if, if you like to step forward, you can, or you can um, send in your testimony. But you have a lot of people here in the audience um, also clearly in your support. Okay, if not, if not, then we will call up the nominee then. Yes, Mr. Freitas. And it's optional. If you'd like to make a statement, you can. Otherwise, you can just um, be open for questions. I'll have a quick statement. Great. Thank you. Great. Just for that. Oh, yeah. that was <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. <sighs> Aloha Chair Shumba Crew, Vice Chair Favela, and members of this committee. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to come before you today. I'm also humbled 
by being nominated by Governor Josh Green to serve in this role as West Hawaii Commissioner. Be assured that I'll give this my all and I'm ready to work for the betterment of the conditions for our beneficiaries. Since my nomination, I've continued to work vigorously to get up to speed on understanding the Hawaiian Homes Act and build relationships within my community, taking the time to meet face-to-face -face with homestead leaders to fully understand their needs. It is through these conversations that I have been able to grasp the kuleana that comes with this nomination. It is heavy, challenging, and longstanding. In my short time with the commission, I participate in two regular commission meetings, two special commission meetings, four contested hearings, three community meetings, two public hearings, and one award orientation. For every hour of public meeting, it takes at least three hours of preparation. Through all of this, I understand that being a commissioner is a full-time volunteer job. To that end, I had to say a big mahalo to my ohana, my two daughters, Wailea and Mohina, my wife, Alani, for allowing me to serve in this capacity if appointed. As commissioners, we are tasked with the duty of protecting the trust of our beloved, that our beloved Prince Kuhio established and to act exclusively in the best interests of those beneficiaries. We need to improve the general welfare and living conditions of Native Hawaiians through educational, economic, political, and cultural programs, thus helping our people achieve self-sufficiency and self-determination. I know that our department is at a pivotal crossroad. We have many challenges that lie ahead for us. Working with other commissioners, staff, Deputy Cat, and with Chair Watson's leadership, we will attack these challenges head on and be able to efficiently and effectively, effectively service our beneficiaries. In closing, I would like to say thank you again to Governor Josh Green for my nomination. And I would like to thank the Senate Hawaiian Affairs Committee for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you I, so much. Okay. I also need to thank, uh, oh, sorry. No, no problem. I also need to thank my fellow commissioners and DHHL staff. I really appreciate the manao and support they've shown to me thus far. And I'm open to any questions you folks may have. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Members, any questions? Not, not so much a, a question as just a statement. Um, Makai and I have come to know each other over the last year and um, working on the greater North Hawaii District 4 and the issues going on there. I have two big Hawaiian home areas there, Waimea Nui and what they call Kailapa. And I have to say, Makai has jumped in head and foot and just dived into getting things handled. We've got a lot of things we have to face and have to face together. And uh, without question, Makai has my support because I think he is the right guy at the right time to start moving the needle forward. I've worked with Councilwoman Sue Leloy back, you know, a year and a half ago, actually my whole time on council, we, we were working on Hawaiian homes issues and hearing the support and looking at the, the list of supporters <laughs> is, is kind of like reading old home week because I recognize them from the different islands and the fact that you've gleaned such a high level of support from a very broad spectrum of um, beneficiaries. I, I think that speaks to itself in the short time, though for the short time, the list of meetings you've attended probably seems like a long time. But I'm, I'm, I'm sure I missed a few things here, <laughs> but thank you. Thank you, Senator, appreciate it. Thank you. Members, any questions? Can I just wait, wait, Jack? Yes, Senator uh, Mr. Freitas, good morning. <laughs> thank you for, for agreeing to take on this tremendous uncompensated responsibility. Uh, you know, many of the homestead communities that uh, I've come to know and meet with from Hawaii Island, they really do look to the commissioners as their regional representative. So can you help us understand for you in the time since you were appointed to now, what your priorities and, and goals are for Hawaii Island and how that plays into the broader Lahui issues that you are now responsible for during your tenure? Um, the issues that we're facing um, in West Hawaii, they're, they're generational, generational issues, and they're not going to be fixed overnight. It's going to be a lot of teamwork. You know, um, I, I'm, I was raised old school, believing in hard work and building relationships. And I think to continue to build those relationships, to kind of get on the first point you asked, is to get involved in the community. You know, to reach out to people you know, to put you in touch with the people in the community, to meet face to face. I don't like meeting on Zoom. I don't like talking on the phone. I don't like texting. 
I got to sit down face to face and read their body language. And I want them to read how I feel about them. I think it shows that I'll take time out of my day to go down there and meet face to face to meet them, to, to talk to them, to understand what their issues are, take it back to, to staff or take it back to representatives in my district. And hey, let's collectively strategize a plan to move forward. Now, as far as priorities, Act 279 is top of the list. You know, we need to move. We, we have a, we have a bunch of money that we're very, very fortunate and appreciative to be to have access to. Uh, if I'm going to narrow it down to my district, we have a lot of that money going to the Laiapua area in, in uh, Kona. So tied into that is financial literacy and also getting involved with, with that community to see exactly what they need. Now, kind of also tied into infrastructure are water issues that we have. You can't have development without water. And water is a major issue through Waimea Nui, the Pukapu area, Kauai High Homestead, Kailapa, as well as down in Laiapu and Kona. And we have allocated and used some of the Act 279 money to, 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 uh, to I guess, get or pay or buy uh, water access. But we need to find at least one or two more water sources. And that's something I've, I've worked with. I've talked to Santa Richards about. I've also talked to um, Representative Tarnas about, too. And his wife, Carolyn Stewart, has been a major help for me uh, as far as understanding water and how do we, you know, how do we collectively, again, strategize a plan to get to our beneficiaries in the process of, of building infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair. Oh, I can't answer all the questions. I was only, oh, yeah. <laughs> only had two questions. You answer them already. Yeah. 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 Infrastructure, yeah. development, everything. Yeah. Okay, I got, I got another one then. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you can answer this one. This one's the hard one. So, <laughs> and you and I have had conversations about this as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. You know, over the years, there has been a uh, uh, I think a back and forth dialogue, but at times it's gotten really contentious with the prior uh, director and the, the prior prior director. It was, I think, quite contentious is this, uh, this debate over Homestead Association access to resources that are not developed into housing yet. Mm -hmm. And then the departments and the commission's uh, position over the years to utilize those lands to generate revenue for things like development or just the operation of the department because the department has been underfunded. So that, that issue has somewhat um, simmered because of the allocation of the, the 600 million. Mm -hmm. But how do you plan to balance those discussions when you have Homestead Association, some organized and maybe some not as organized who want access? They want licenses, they want leases, they want, leases, they want commercial opportunities to areas in the DHHL inventory that are generating revenue and are being operated by non-homesteaders. How do you balance that out with uh, communities like mine in Kaneohe and Kailua that have no homestead, but have thousands of waitlisters who are not as interested in having other homestead associations generate revenue, perhaps to the detriment of their ability and the department's ability to use those funds to develop mm -hmm. more homes? It's a tough one, man. Uncompensated so, volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> so let's break that. Let's break that down into into, into compartments. Uh, first of all, is is the non beneficiaries with licenses, business licenses on DHL land, and that's something we need to look forward, look into. And every meeting I've been through, you have you have beneficiaries who are not very happy about that. And Co Chair Watson has had discussions with us about looking into policies to help Native Hawaiian groups, empower them, and make sure they have the capacity to take over these leases and to, and to flourish and to perpetuate them. Uh, I don't have all the facts you know, on, on the questions you asked. I am learning, and you're right, there are some extremely, extremely organized uh, homes associations. So from a commissioner standpoint, we're there to support them, whatever the mission is. You know, the Hawaiian in Waimea is different from the Hawaiian in Kailapa, in Kauai High, Laiapua different demographics, different ahupuas, different needs. Uh, so to analyze those needs and to help them become more organized and then work with staff and as well as the legislature and of course the Hawaiian Affairs Committee, again, to strategize a plan so that, so that they, can, they can benefit. You know, there is a revenue source, some you know, commercialized leases that I'm still, I'm still learning about, it needs to be a revenue source to go back to the beneficiaries. We need to re reinvest that money back into our people. 
It's not to make the DHHL portfolio wider and stronger. It is to reinvest that money back back into the whether into a spectrum of possibilities that I can't really get into because I don't know all of them and I'm still learning. But right now, I think act like I go back to Act 279. We got to execute that as efficiently and effectively and quickly as possible. You know, to try to reduce the wait list as, as fast as we can. Uh, talk to Ch- uh, Chair Watson as well as Deputy Decat and. They're, they're thinking outside the box. They want to they want to put Hawaiians in homes, you know. So hopefully that can alleviate some of the stress. I know your area has probably the highest concentration of people on the wait list in the state, and I understand how frustrating it is. I see it in people's faces when you sit down with a beneficiary, and then there's tears in their eyes because of frustration they're going through. It's hard for me. I don't have an answer for them, honestly. A lot of times I don't have that slam dunk black and white. Hey, let's, let's, let's here's the answer. Let's go and execute it. It's it's not as easy as you know as as. I thought it was at first and people think it is, but that's something we'll, we'll always we'll be taking into consideration and it's, it's at the forefront of our agenda as well. Yeah. Thank you. I'm not sure my district has the most waitlisters. We definitely have the most waitlisters for a community with no homesteads. Okay. Right. But it's a high concentration though. Absolutely. Cause they, cause they, they reach out to us and they tell us, right. But that is part of why over the years there, you know, I think the, the discussion itself gets lost on, on social media and in the talking points when you have commercial entities making money on DHHL lands and you have homesteaders saying, we want to Absolutely. run those operations Absolutely. and attain that revenue. And you have waitlisters on the outside going, whoa, shouldn't, that, shouldn't we just be trying to make as much money as possible so you can get me off the list? Why yeah. are we now making other considerations? Yeah. And the reason is the act requires commissioners like you to figure out what the balance is, yeah. right? It's a three-pronged attack and a three-pronged balance act, balance act you gotta do. But I think, you know, I'm, I'm for beneficiaries. Our job is to service them, protect the trust. They're, they're not, they're beneficiaries of Prince School Hills Trust, you know, and to help them economically, politically, culturally falls under that, under, it's part of the balancing act. How do you balance, how do you, how do you do the balancing act efficiently and be able to, to service the beneficiaries in those, in those capacities? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Vice Chair. Yeah. Not on my paper. I think this came in my head. <laughs> um, over the years, I know you guys, most of the people know that I've been harping on Prince Kuyo Mall in, uh, in uh, Hawaii Island. Yeah. And not all of my colleagues agree with me, but, um, you know, now that we have a visionary, visionary like uh, Kali Watson, you know, uh, going forward and seeing how we can develop and uh, use uh, best uh, practices for generating income. What I didn't like is that one of my colleagues said that we don't see any billion dollar, million billion dollar Hawaiians that can take over that mall. But I wasn't looking for a billion dollar. I was looking for a Hawaiian that had a vision that's gonna take back the lease and empower our people. Because right now that don't belong to us. Mm-hmm. Our Hawaiians that is leasing in there pay fair market value. And the person that's leasing the land is not paying fair market value. So I want you to kind of marinate this as you go forward. When the leases are coming up, I pray that Kali does the right thing. Take back the lease, use his mind that he knows how to do, and develop housing in combination with the mall, like how they do with Ala Moana. Mm-hmm. If they can do that for the millionaires, we can do that for our Hawaiians who need homes. Maybe we're not going to own them, but they can rent them. Here's a Fukupuna housing. At the time when Prince Kuhio Mall was there and was um, before Hawaiian homes could build anything, it was because it was brown land, brown whatever, whatever the kinds. You know, the kinds. I don't know, too. I just started. But at that time, couldn't build homes. We always get junk land to build Hawaiian land, Hawaiian homes. And then we find out cannot build them because it's not um, equitably to be owned. But I think this is a great opportunity right now and Hawaiian homes take it by the hand and look at Prince Kuhio Mall and develop that mall similar to what they did with Ala Moana, but that our people, not only uh, maybe a Hawaiian nonprofit, an, uh, an entity to run the mall, and then go ahead and start building on top of the mall. Mm-hmm. Did, did, you, did you hear any? I mean, did you hear anybody ask you guys about that lease? Yeah, that it's, 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 it's actually a very turbulent topic. Uh, when I had the opportunity to sit down with the Pana Elvin uh, Kyokaha Homes Associations, that's at the top of their list. And, you know, to sit down and tell you I have a, I have a 
100% slam dunk plan on it. I don't. Uh, Cully has, you know, in exec sessions, expressed a few things off the record to us, his vision for it. I understand the home the homes associations. I understand their frustration. It could be it could be a revenue source. It could be a mechanism to to provide a constant revenue flow, which again, like I said, would be reinvested back into our communities. Yeah. It could be looked at as, as, as potential housing projects. Yeah. I think there's a multitude of issues and a multitude of possibilities. Yeah. But the key component I feel in moving forward towards that is beneficiary consultation. Yeah. That's the key component. And communication, I feel, is the root or lack thereof communication is a root to a lot of problems, no matter what arena you are in life. And I hate to use the word education because sometimes you say, oh, I want to educate them. It oftentimes can have a condescending, condescending connotation. Yeah. So I prefer to use communication. I mean, and to kind of go back to what Jared was saying is we got to get you got to get in the weeds. You got to get in the trenches and that, that those don't get accomplished by Zoom calls. They don't get accomplished by phone calls or text messages. It's getting in the truck and driving down there and having those tough, tough conversations. And they're going to be uncomfortable. They're not going to be easy. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to be roses and butterflies. They're going to be tough, hard, uncomfortable conversations. But, you know, and to quote the great, late, great uh, Wally Ishibashi, who passed away recently, who I had the opportunity to talk to a week before he passed, um, 100 years of tears. It's always going to stick with me. 100 years of tears. That's what our people have been going through. So... You know, so I, you get the frustration. You, you can't, you can't, you, I understand where they're coming from, you yeah. know? And um, so one thing I can promise you is that we will have beneficiary consultation and I, we will, uh, Commissioner Kilikini, Kilikini, who's the East Hawaii chair and I work together. We are separated, you know, two separate districts, yeah. but we're one island. We're one island, we've got to work shoulder to shoulder and attacking these problems head on. And we, we intend to do so, but I can't express enough the, the importance of having beneficiary consultation and having a higher level of communication with the people. That's, thank you for that, because that's what I wanted. I just wanted to, to make sure that when the leases are coming up, that it goes to the beneficiaries, because by side, sidestepping the beneficiaries on the best practice revenue driving for that, I'm not telling them to close them all, mm. but you know, to have these kinds of stuff that, oh, mm. they don't need spaces to the marrying mom up. I mean, you know, we'll give all of these kinds of breaks, but what about the Hawaiians that need homes? Mm -hmm. You know, anybody giving breaks to them? No. no so this is the same thing. And you know, I go, you know, I go island wide. And this has been something from day one when I got elected mm -hmm. and Hawaii Island wanted me to work with the commission at that time. Was it as open with um, Chair Isla? But I just hope it's open to the commission and uh, Chair Kelly Watson because I think that'll be a best practice going forward in generating revenue for our people in Hilo, yeah. especially in an area where there's no jobs, there's no nothing, no. and uh, no. we have to have something that will generate more of yeah. a way of paths going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Homes absolutely. Our, our think, homes. Yeah, so Thank you. Yeah, communication is, I think, is a key with that and bringing them in a circle on the table. Thank you. Thank Chair. you, Chair. Yes, Senator Richards. Yeah, thank you. Um, Chair, if Councilman Sulila, this is her district, her area, if she's still on, could we ask her to give a few comments about that? Is that acceptable? Yes, sure, of course, yes. Uh, Councilman, Councilman Sue, are you still there? I am. Oh, there you are. Thank you, um, Senator. Oha, Sue, this is your district. We've talked story about this. Um, and I know you've talked to Makai about some of this. Can you just give your perspective on this, please? Yeah, thank you for that question, Senator. And then for Senator Kiohokaloli and Senator Favela, here on Hawaii Island, as a council member, we've already started that conversation to start kind of building capacity in our Native Hawaiian communities. We've used a number of our grant and aid applications along with meeting with uh, OHA to help our homesteads specifically build up areas of commercial development and how we can get our beneficiaries ready to take on these leases that are either expiring or will become expired. Ideally, uh, Makai is an excellent fit. He's been involved in those conversations already as we kind of create that groundswell to get them ready. And as you heard him describe himself earlier, He's hardworking and he builds relationships and he's already begun to do that in just the short month that he's been a commissioner. 
we really are excited to have Mr. Freitas join the, the commission and really help Hawaii Island, not only from his side on the west side, but along with Commissioner Clay Kimi um, on the east side. It, it really is a nice working relationship with the goal to serve our beneficiaries. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, appreciate that, Chair. Thank you. Okay, members, any other questions? Okay, seeing none, then I think I'm ready to um, make decisions. Do you folks need to recess or can we go ahead and go right into it? Okay. So I would like to, for GM 674, oh, no. oh, anything, oh, is this? There you go. Yeah, there's a black yeah. there. For GM 674, submitting for consideration and confirmation to the Hawaiian Homes Commission, nominee Makai Freitas for term to expire June 30, 2025. Recommendation is to advise and consent. Um, and so, yeah, great testimony. Any questions or concerns, members? So, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay. Chair Shibakura. Aye. Vice Chair was aye. Senator Yahara, excuse. Senator Keho Kolole. Aye. Senator Richard. Aye. Can motion pass? All right. Congratulations. Thank You're you very appointed. Much. Thank you. For a group photo. Yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> and we're almost done. And then just a few more votes. HCR 125 is requesting DHHL to identify resources needed to execute a plan to repair homes for safe habitation. Recommendation is to pass as is, but note the concerns of DHHL in the committee report. Any concerns or questions? We see none, uh, Vice Chair. All right. Um, all senators in the Hawaiian committee, except excusing Senator Yahara. Any uh, no's or nays or a's, eyes? Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. SR 196, urging establishment of the Native Hawaiian Intellectual Property Working Group to discuss policies and legislation with respect to Native Hawaiian intellectual property. Recommendations have passed with amendments. I'm going to recommend we adopt Lemomi Khan's recommendations, which is to add the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs to the working group and to the distribution list. Also adopt DBED's recommendation to um, have the working group consult with industry stakeholders such as Creative Industries Division and DBED enter to, in order in other Native Hawaiian communities and organizations deemed appropriate or encouraged to cooperate and provide information or input to the working group. Okay, any any questions or concerns? <laughs> Seeing none, Vice Chair. All members present, if Senator Yahari excuse, any nays, reservations? All right, motion passes. And then finally, HCR 153, Requesting 153, requesting DHHL to conduct a study that evaluates possible methods of flood remediation and flood aversion for certain areas of the island of Molokai. Recommendation passed as is, and then note the concerns of DHHL in the committee report. Any concerns or questions? No. no? Okay. Well, there's a President of Hawaiian Affairs Committee, except, except excuse absence of Senator Yohara. Any nays or reservations? Okay. Motion passes. Okay, we are adjourned. All right, members, let's take this.